welcome to my sewing room and welcome to Friday Sews. If we've not met, my name is Christine and this is my channel, Christine Sews A Lot, where I talk about all things sewing. Today, I am wearing the Sagebrush Top by the Friday Pattern Company in my most recent make. This is the Clio by Tilly and the Buttons. I'll talk more about this in my October makes, but this is hot off my machine this morning. Something new to Friday Sews is that the YouTube creators who use the hashtag Friday Sews have an optional prompt that they can use as a discussion starter on Fridays. And today's prompt is two part. It is, what is the craziest thing you have ever sewn? And in light of Halloween, what is the craziest costume you have ever sewn? Let me know in the comments below what your craziest sew is and what your craziest costume sew is. I'd really like to know. So for me, I had to give a little think on this because in my mind, it's not crazy to sew anything. And I was thinking about this and that, and I decided I'm going to go with my second most recent make. My longest friend, I decided we were no longer going to call each other oldest friends. We've been friends since we were eight years old. She came over yesterday, and on her way over from the beach, she had stopped at Bucky's, which is this big chain gas station that is unlike any truck stop gas station that you would have in your mind. They have evidently a huge, huge gift shopping section. And she was telling me, she started off, oh, I, I found something that I would love for you to make for me. And we've been friends for so long that if there's something that she wants me to make and I can make it, I'm going to make it. And uh, she was telling me how, how I don't like to really wear an apron and my towel's always soggy and I think this would be the answer. And she said, they sell this thing called a towel boa. She started trying to describe it to me and I asked her, get it over here. Are you talking about something like this? And she said, exactly. She said that Bucky's was selling these for $20 and that they had a double layered one that they were selling for $35. And she looked at it and she thought, oh, well, that would be perfect. The towel's always handy. She could have one side for drying her hands and one side for you know, drying a knife she's washed or something like that, and that she would just wear it. And my friend Barbara made this for me a couple of Christmases ago, and I had not really thought about the utilitarian of it. I would get it out at Christmas time, and when we would hand wash the nice things, I would, I would use it, but I didn't use it every day. So, my crazy sew is a towel boa. And these are so simple that, yes, you should not be paying $35 for this. Especially when you have people in your life who love to sew. So this part, fabric part is just the width of a fabric. And I made it a tiny bit wider so that I could enclose this bottom layer so I could totally enclose that. And uh, I had some towel left over from a couple of projects. I had made the grandsons a beach cover up out of this, this really nice quality Turkish towel. And I've also used some of the scraps for reusable makeup wipes. And I still have a little bit left so I thought, okay, we happen to be going to visit my uh, friend on today. <laughs> We're going up for a quick, quick visit. And uh, I thought this would be the perfect hostess gift. As soon as she left to go pick her husband up, 
uh, I made this. <laughs> so a couple of thoughts on this, um, comparing the one I made to the one my friend Bar Barbara made is Barbara used a dish towel and it has no, everything is bound. So this would have been the easier way to go. And I think this is gonna, this is more durable than this one is gonna be. This was, I was using what I had and I knew that we were gonna be uh, going over to their house soon and so I did try to make it as neat as possible. I surged where I cut the towel and then finished off the ends, but this may not be as durable. We shall see. The beauty of it is this only took minutes to make, so if it is not super durable, I'll know for when I make her the next one to make it a little more durable. So I'm calling this crazy because I think I look a little crazy wearing it. So let me know what did what is the craziest thing you have ever sewn? Was it for yourself? Was it for somebody else? Uh, let me know below. So the craziest costume, and I have done a fair amount of costume sewing because my grandchildren love for me to sew for them. They're little guys and they like to dress up. So the craziest of the bunches of stuff that I have made for them would definitely be the Cardinal costume. Uh, the oldest grandson was four going on five and he wanted to be a Cardinal. And it was like, a cardinal you know you think that's a little bit random but they really enjoyed feeding and watching the birds and he wanted to be a cardinal and I said sure sure I can make you a cardinal and my husband's thinking I'm full-on crazy but I had remembered seeing a Rebecca Page pattern I think it's called Cape Fantastic I'll link it below and I thought, I thought there's a pattern out there. I don't think this is as hard as it sounds. And I was right. I bought the pattern and went shopping, got my materials. And it was not expensive to make and it was not difficult to make. And it has a big wow factor. And I'll insert a picture here of him modeling it for me. <laughs> I'll even assert one of Charlie modeling it. He was pretty excited about how it came out. I would say that the most difficult thing about that costume, and it wasn't difficult, I'll say it was time consuming. There were two things. One was tracing very accurately the placement of where I was going to attach the feathers and I will link a picture of it in progress so you can see what I'm talking about and I use the same method as when I um, made bowl covers where you just take a ruler and you just work your way around almost like a compass making marks little dots and then connecting them to get a nice smooth circle or in this case a semicircle. and they suggested this in the pattern but also you could just know that if you tried to just willy-nilly attach the feathers you just weren't going to get as nice of a finish and the other thing was I think it was around a hundred feathers that I cut out of felt and it would obviously, it depends on what size you're making as to how many feathers you would need, but I really got into a rhythm there on cutting out the feathers. It really came together easy. And like I said, it has a real wow factor. So that one probably looks the most intimidating of all the costumes that I have sewn and maybe the craziest concept wise 
The others all tend to be pretty darn cute. So tell me, what have you made? We are ready for Halloween. We're gonna be giving out ring pops and candy bars. These are just so glamorous. I couldn't resist. What are you giving out this Halloween? Are you like me and you go for the fun item? Or sometimes I go for the candy I know that I wouldn't eat. Well, and this would definitely fall under that category, especially after wearing it a little bit. It just would seem not too clean to eat it. But then again, I'm a little older than the target market for this. So what are you handing out for Halloween? Let me know in the comments below. So other than my Cleo Pinafore and my towel boa, the only other thing that I have made this week is reusable microwave popcorn bags. And I will put a link to the tutorial for making these. So I know several of you I have seen have already made this. Um, when I was doing the tutorial, I made several of these. These will go into our church's craft fair at Christmas time. And I have one, as you saw in the video, if you watched it, that I've been using for a couple of years now. And it's so handy to have these and much better for the environment, not to have all that plastic and packaging. So that's all I've been up to. I did order another pattern. I know. <laughs> I'm no longer to say I'm not going to order anything because um, I'll be lying. So um, I ordered the new patina blouse pattern from Friday Pattern Company. I have not sent it off to be printed yet. I have some other blouses that I have had printed up and haven't even cut out. So I need to get some of those done first. I did get some fabric in. Um, nothing terribly exciting. I wanted to, as you know, I wanted to sew up the Davenport and I looked through my stash and I just did not have enough yardage to do a practice version. And fabric.com has a sale going on until November 1st and um, you know they run sales periodically but this was uh, up to 30% off or 35% off of certain fabrics if you bought three plus yards of it and there's a chambray it's listed as a stretch chambray I bought actually nine yards of it because it came out to less than seven dollars a yard and I just crossed my fingers and I was so happy with it so I think that's going to give me some good practice fabric that is also very wearable so at less than seven dollars a yard I thought the quality was really good and I look forward to getting started on my Davenport I did get some linen and a couple of rayons during the sale. One of them is purple, it's over here. I don't know if I have time to sew this up in time for Michelle's challenge of Sew Purple to End ALZ that she's hosting over on Instagram. But when I saw this, I thought even if I don't make the challenge, I will always think of Michelle not just because of the purple, but all the bright, lively colors together. This is definitely a Michelle fabric. So we'll see if I can get this sewn up in October. Let me know down below, what are you working on? And are you gonna be going to a Halloween party and dressing up? Have you made a costume? Let me know below. If you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to see some more, I have links to some other videos in the end card that you may enjoy. Until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Bye. Or should I wave like this?